Welcome back to Crate Myrtle Journals. I'm going to do a flip through of my most recent journal. Before I do that, I want to share a few tips with you. Um, one tip is if you have quotes that you find in books that mean a lot to you, you can cut them out and leave them on your workspace here. These quotes have just never made it into a journal because I they are very inspiring to me. Creating treasures out of everyday objects. I even ink the edges of this. It just has never made it into a journal. Complete. This I see this word every day on faxes that come into our uh, little school. And um, it reminds me that I'm complete in the Lord and there's nothing that I lack. He has given me all that I need for living and life and peace. And so I love that. And every time I see it on a, a completed fax, it reminds me of his care for me. This says something that lasts. And that definitely makes me think of uh, a junk journal. It can be a keepsake. And then this one will crack you up if you're a junk journaler. And I think that someday I shall have to make another larger book. And my journals tend to be very fat like this. Oh, and the last one is this Danish word that I can't pronounce, H-Y-G-G-E. And I know that it means um, cozy, warm, charming. And a person from Denmark used this word to describe one of my pages one time uh, on a photo from a photo. And it just, I just loved learning a new word and I just love the meaning of it. So um, my daughter-in-law has this uh, Dymo tape machine and she was typing, uh, printing up a bunch of labels for me. And I said, oh, would you print some uh, this word and I can use it in a journal? Well, I haven't used it yet, obviously, but this makes a great uh, tool. If you have a Dymo labeler, um, then you can make your own you know, labels to put in a journal. So those kind of inspire me. They sit there and um, then I'm going to scoot this over. And some other tips are if you have any of these picture corners from old photo albums, I haven't, you know, I've used them as a, a decoration on a corner in a journal, but I found a cute use for them, and that is to make a little closure for envelopes, or in this case, this is a flip down that you would write on. So this little picture corner makes a nice closure. For example, here is a envelope I made. You would attach the little corner on it, so it's in the right position. And then put glue on the back of that old corner. And I scoot this out after I glue it so that I don't, so it doesn't stick at all. And make sure it's glued down really well and then it becomes your closure. And I've got so many of these that uh, I, I'm glad I finally found a use for them. I'll keep things like this for, you know, a year. But if I have not used them for anything, I, I will de-stash until I only have a few left so that I don't just keep little bits that um, just get lost in the shuffle in, in my little bins. Um, another tip is I have a jar template from some packaging. And I use this template to um, searching in magazines and books. I will lay this on an image and trace around it, then cut it out. And then kind of make some gray lines here to, to make it look like a jar. And then it looks like something is encased in the jar. And I imitate these little uh, lines around the jar to look like a glass, um, you know, just a glass effect. So here's a couple of examples. I just stamp that. I am not stamped it. I place that over the image, trace around it, and cut it out. And in this case, I put in a little pocket on the back. So that's a journaling card. Here's another one where I just covered up that image, traced around it, cut it out, and then I also put a pocket on the back of that one. And on this one I tied a little bow around the, the neck of it. So that's one idea. I used the same idea with this uh, jar stamp. I put the jar stamp over an image I like, then cut it out, and so it makes a journaling card, and it looks like something is inside the jar. Another tip is... What do you do if you mess up a page? If you just totally mess up a page in your journal, don't hesitate to just remove it. I removed this page yesterday because 
This, I don't know if you can tell, but this is a, it looks almost like a watercolor paper. I think it was writing paper, but it has a, like a watercolor torn edge, really beautiful, but it's very hefty, almost like cardstock, and it has ridges. It's beautiful paper, which is why I wanted to put it in the journal, but it did not like being creased and sewn into a, a signature. So when I saw that it was splitting up the side, I thought, okay, I'm just going to remove this. So you just gently tear it out. It's only a three-hole pamphlet stitch, so it's only attached in three spots. So don't hesitate to remove a page if it's messed up or doesn't fit. This can be repurposed and used elsewhere. And I used the other half of this uh, page from the signature elsewhere here in this journal. So I'm going to still use this, but don't hesitate to tear a page out if you have to. And... Okay, that was all of my tips that I had thought of to share with you. I'm going to go through this Flight and Flower journal. My husband named it that, or he suggested the name, he said, because it had flowers and lots of bird motifs. I even used my, I have a homemade uh, bird feet uh, stamp that I made from just some art foam, and I've got that throughout the, you know what, I need to put some more of those. I only have them on the cover. I need to pull that out and make sure I put some more. Um... So this just tied with a piece of um, sagey kind of green fabric with a string hanging off. And I just attached a bead on the end of it. So that is the closure. This is an old book cover. It's a hidden um, spine with three whole pamphlet stitch, uh, five signatures, one, two, three, four, five. Just a little piece of, um, I think this is like a very large spool of a floral ribbon. So it's soft, it's not plasticky, but I dyed it and scrunched it up and just a charm from somewhere, some thrift store. And I used a binder clip to, to hold it on the edge. So it could be removed. And then I used some vintage lace over the uh, fabric that's underneath that. And the five signatures, the first signature is really just this uh, pouch that is made from an old file folder. I just cut it down to fit in this in this journal. The front page, the front cover is an index card pocket that I coffee dyed, sewed some acetate on it and encased some flowers from my garden. And this little piece of like spidery moss is from Florida. But this is a piece of, of, uh, of a flower from my garden called um, coxcomb or um, celosia. And then I put a stitch right here so that there would be a pocket here and cut a little divot in the acetate. And here's one of those little, you know, I should put one of those coffee, I mean, uh, corners from pictures on that little flip down. A book plate, a clipboard that I made. It says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, Matthew 6, 20. And I, I have a, a tutorial on how to make these little clipboard journaling cards. Very easy. Don't need any special tools. A note from the bookmaker. It's adapted from um, a freebie from Pam at the Paper Outpost. She gives you a freebie template and you can change it up to fit your own needs. And this is a journaling card uh, made from a piece of like Battenberg lace on some fabric. And I just sewed it onto this. This is actually packaging from a popsicle package. It's great value popsicles. They're sugar-free popsicles. Here's the packaging. This product has produced so many materials for me for junk journals. This uh, outer um, decoration peels off super easy and leaves a very... Um, Pour a sub substrate that you can glue things on really easily. But the inside of the package is the most beautiful coffee looking like paper. So I've used it over and over and over. It's produced a lot of journaling cards. So it's an endless amount of material in just one package. And I glued on this little charm of two little birds. And that is the journaling card. Here's another journaling card. This is actually, this is a long tape like um, fabric tape that was a fringe on a pillow. So I have probably, you know, 25 of these and they were just on that fringe on the pillow. I decided to use them on the top of the journaling card. And that might be, that's an index card that's been coffee dyed. So that is the first front pocket and I'll try not to go 
I'll try not to analyze every pocket and try to go more quickly so you can see everything. So this front pouch is just a file folder that I have cut into this shape and filled it with goodies. Here's a craft, um, in a miniature craft folder. I have a tutorial on how to make this too. And it's full of goodies. This is a Franken, Franken page uh, envelope where I have sewn bits of scraps together to make a piece of paper and then made an envelope out of it. And it's full of words related to prayer and conversations with God. Just a bunch of words. Getting to know God that the journaler could pull out of here and glue to pages and use as writing prompts. And that's clipped in here with a little bow tie paper clip. So there's a bunch of journaling cards. It says God is holding us. No one can snatch you out of God's hand. This is a template I made of a bird in flight. I used an alphabet stamp to write daily bread and first. And this is a removable and movable paper clip that looks like a girl reading a book or a boy reading a book. And all the action going on behind her makes me think of all the drama in the Bible, all the stories, all the narratives. And um, so it seemed to fit. Here is a little stitched envelope uh, flip that you could write on and seal closed with that string. This is a Rolodex card, vintage, and I used some vintage lace on here that a friend gave me from like a 90 plus year old grandma who collected vintage lace. And I got a gift of, of several batches of it and or several pieces of it. And here's some that I've already used in elsewhere. But isn't that the most amazing thing? It makes me wonder who wore it and what her name was and the history of it. So I used little bits here and there. So you can tell it's a brown bag. I just kept the shape of the top of the brown bag. Little piece of... Um, tape like fabric tape and it already had a stamp on it and I just attached a few pieces of material that are used in the book with that a little tiny um, safety pin. I found a pack of yellow doilies at a flea market and I just thought they were so bright and beautiful. This is a die cut of a flower and I kind of colored it up a little bit with muted colors. This is a charm on top of a paper clip, but it is more pressed flowers sewn into this little piece of cardstock. With acetate on top to encase the flowers. Treasures. This is just a index card. Coffee dyed and I made it into a tag and then used it as a pocket. This was a greeting card. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Here's one of those. Oh, I did use one of those um, little corner, picture corners to make that closure. Here's a pocket with some, when God says no. Oh, that's a, that's a tough one, when God says no. This is just brown paper packaging like a couple of layers and I just stitched around the edge and put some more of that fabric that I've used in the closure on it. This is one of my um, foam rubber stamp designs. This is my mother-in-law gave me a bunch of fabric and I enjoyed finding these bird um, pictures on it, cutting them out and putting them on a um, journaling card. You can see it's more of that popsicle packaging. It says love one another. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your requests to God. Philippians 4 6. Here's another one of those brown paper 
cards and more of that vintage lace on top and an old greeting, I mean, an old uh, playing card with the owl on it. Keep on asking God. You don't have because you don't ask. James 4, 2. Keep asking God. It makes me think of, um, I have an older friend who I asked uh, about a year and a half ago to start meeting with me. And we've been prayer partners for a year and a half. And she and I have been talking about this word, importunity. And it's used when, when God, uh, when Jesus is telling the disciples how to pray, because they ask him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he teaches them the Our Father. And then he tells them a couple of parables. And one is about someone who knocks on a neighbor's door and the, the person needs some bread. And the neighbor doesn't answer because he's already gone to bed. And the person consistently or persistently keeps knocking. And finally, the neighbor comes down and gives him what he wants. And Jesus gave that parable as a way to say, keep praying. Don't stop praying. And pray kind of audaciously. Just keep asking in faith, knowing God hears us. So I've been learning that with this older friend and really enjoying that truth. And it's really grown my faith. Sovereign sending, like sending prayers, maybe. I try to put in prompts. People may perceive them and use them in any way they want to. And also, if you, if you put in prompts in a journal and someone doesn't like them, you can tell them. You know, I put in a lot of goodies in all these pockets. You can always put something over it if you don't like the word or it doesn't fit what you're about to write on this page. You can put your own thing down or your own word, like this says, inspire. So things are changeable. You should tell people when they get a journal from you or if you have a journal, they're very changeable. It says you are here. That's all it says on this page from a book. And it could either be talking to the Lord, Lord, you are here with me, or like here's the um, day in the life of where I am right now in 2024. This is just a sticker. And one suggestion is um, write the word sticker on the back of stickers. This is just a commercially made sticker. But I know sometimes people might think it's just a piece of paper, and it can be used that way. But I write sticker on the back of the sticker so people will know. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. And that fits here with the bird and with the theme of birds. I like this um, picture from a magazine because it also has dried flowers on the back. This says bloom. hummingbird. This is from a book called Flower Children, where there's these sweet illustrations where children are dressed up as different flowers. This is a one of the journaling cards and tucks that I've made using my own template. Here's another example of one done a little bit differently with some other marks on it. This is one of my homemade stamps using art foam and um, cardboard or wood blocks, and I have a tutorial on that. But this can be used as a journaling card or a tuck, as it is here. And here's another one of those Rolodex cards. I've used some vintage lace here, and this is a little bird's nest on a snippet roll. This snippet roll is made with um, like cash register tape that I found at a, at a flea market. I just coffee dyed it and then sewed all these bits on it, bits of fabric, and then I attached with a uh, gourd pin or bulb pin, a tiny jar with a dragonfly in it and a tiny piece of shell button or shell charm. And it, I use it as a belly band and it says ask. The little nest idea is from the paper outpost um, Pam shows you how to make those with just your leftover strings from your sewing machine, and I really enjoy that. This is a little side tuck using vintage lace, and I just left it hanging off the edge, and then it made a spot here. And here is the other half of the page that got ditched because it was cracking. I just um, tore around it to make it a little smaller. It says ask here. So that it would fit in this pocket and then this is just a beautiful piece of paper that has like silver flecks on it 
and I put a stamp of a bird on it. And this is a journaling card using more of that packaging from the popsicle. I put a little pocket on the back too with a piece of like a gauzy material. And then uh, this is a piece of that same gauzy kind of material glued to it. And a little fabric ruffle from an old, old uh, piece of satiny material. Probably got it at a flea market. These are my own stamps. I designed this kind of one inch by one inch uh, flower stamp and it's just repeated in a pattern of four across there. I was playing with, um, I think it was a rubber eraser and carving out an image on it. I dyed these pages in the backyard using tie-dye ink and coffee. But tie-dye ink, if you ever have someone who's finished tie-dyeing some tie some t-shirts, that, that gives you an endless amount of ink that's very bright. And I put a piece of uh, cardstock from, I think it was Stampin' Up! cardstock, against this paper when I was coffee dyeing it. And the the cardstock bled onto the, to the other papers and it made the most beautiful um, color design. So it kind of looks like the beach with that kind of aqua color and then the coffee. I have several pages like that and I really like it. It says trust. Thank you. I thought a person could write things they're thankful for. Don't be afraid to put your own doodles in the corners of your pages. Um, this is a piece of paper that I used all of my own rubber stamps on. You can recognize it's the same rose stamp, but this time I used green, shades of green. But all these stamps are ones that I made. And I folded it over into a little tuck. Here's another little envelope made from a piece of paper. It's just a flip out so you could write in it. And I used the paper button too as a closure. Learning to pray is one of the prompts there. This was from um, dry cleaning. Anytime you find paper in the regular world that is interesting, you know, those slowly paper will probably be used less and less um, as it already has been. Um, but save these little bits of ephemera to use in your journals. It's a tiny file folder put on the edge with a tiny paper clip. I think I found these on Amazon. And this file folder is a template that I made. You don't have to have any special um, equipment to make little folders and little miniatures from from paper. I did have to work a while at getting to get the template the way I wanted it to be because at first it looked rough or uneven so I just kept snipping away at my template or trying again until I got a shape that I felt like was very uniform and looked really like a miniature file folder and I even put a tiny little label on it. So I just clipped that to the edge of the paper. It could be moved anywhere in the journal. It's just a little flip up with the bird underneath. I just thought that paper was so beautiful. It didn't need any other decoration. This was from the a magazine. It looks like um, lotus flowers or... Um, Water lilies, kind of had a neat pod, seed pod. And I just thought it was so beautiful. It might've been a plate, a picture of a plate. So I thought I would sew it down in a signature and just use the open sides as pockets. And this piece of paper from a, from a scrapbook paper, it kind of had similar like seed pods, like um, poppies or, it kind of reminded me of this pod. So I tucked it in there and I, t I made, um, using an alphabet stamp, create in me a clean heart. This is an old playing card. I used a butterfly template to um, make a bunch of butterflies and I wrote a bunch of words related to butterflies and flight on a piece of paper. 
and then use that as my paper to cut the butterflies out. This is just full of goodies. This is a date stamp where the person can use that at the top of a page and circle the right day, the right day of the month, and the right month, day of the week, and year, so they can label what they're writing about. Always more love than we need. I thought that was good. God gives us complete love. Here's another flip down to write on, but I also left it glued in such a way that it could become a little pocket. Here's the other half of the paper I made with my own stamps. I made a glassine bag out of like tracing paper, and then I put in a bunch of butterflies for them to use wherever they wanted. Used um, a vocabulary card from Spanish. Confiar means to trust. This is just a tuck spot. Bunch of goodies in this little pocket. Here's the other part of that page that the, the colored cardstock bled onto it. It says favorite things here. This is from a children's book called Thimble Summer. And I have one that I will not cut up because I think it's a sweet book. I'll probably read it to my grand grandkids. But the illustrations on the end papers are so beautiful. I did find one that was um, at a flea market that I deconstructed. This is just a picture from a, from a book of little birds and I added a paper ruffle to it. Delight in life. Don't hesitate, as I said, to put in your own little doodles in the corner. That's just a dandelion with seeds flying off of it. This is some seam binding. It's unusual because it has that little um, uh, pretty edge. But this is just a flip up. It says obey. This paper is, I found it at an estate sale. The person who lived there had written their own arrangements of, of existing songs so that he had tons of notebooks with his own handwritten uh, notes on endless pages. And these were very dark, already dark brown, but I definitely saw the potential to use them in journals. There's another piece of that vintage lace. Let me snap my lamp on real quick. A little piece of that vintage lace. What flowers tell about God, and that's a picture from a magazine of a flower. This was in my mom's paper stash when she passed away, a bunch of this Christmas paper she used, probably for newsletters, but I have used those in journals over and over now because it's such a pretty border. This is a library pocket. It's also open on the side to be used as a uh, tuck spot. This is... Probably another piece of that um, packaging from the popsicles, but instead of making it into a journaling card, I left it as a pocket. When I am weak, then, am I, then I am strong, 2 Corinthians 12, 10. And this is a celosia or coxcomb from my garden. And I just loved the um, this little piece of like fern. I think it's from Florida. I went on, went on a trip to Florida and I took my flower press with me and Every little thing I found, I saved. But it reminded me of this little shape on this uh, wallpaper scrap. So I tried to tie the two of them together. These are two index cards um, with the acetate and flower encased in there. And this is just from an old file folder. But I found this rubber stamp that shows the DNA helix. And it looks like flowers coming off of the edge of it. And it definitely made me think of worshiping God through creation and what he has made. And the incredible book of information that is in a DNA. When we look at a building, we know it has a builder. Well, the book of DNA is far more complex than a building. And we know that DNA has a writer of that information. 
This is, I got a whole packet of these from a dollar store and they have really worked well as little tuck spots. And this is just an illustration from a book, I think about friendship, a friend indeed. I just love the muted colors of those flowers. This paper's from India, I believe. And I have a whole pack I got from a garage sale and I use one per journal, but it's the most interesting fabric-y texture. Here's an example of the jar stamp where I found a flower that looked like it was, you know, encased in the jar. Here's another one of those butterflies from the dollar store. Here's the center of the signature. On the center of the signatures, I attach little tiny butterflies to the strands. This is a watercolor that I did, and the watercolor paper is, it's so thick that I thought, well, I guess it could be a pocket. Um, but I was playing with watercolors and trying to, trying to make little drawings of birds. Wing in Spanish is la, el, ala. And this little charm is a little bird. I used, I probably had eight or 10 of those, and I think this is my last one. And another envelope that is a flip down. So the person can write, oh, beyond this place, that makes me think of heaven and how the um, this earth is not our home. Our real home is beyond this place. Man, that tie-dye ink makes really rich colors. Here's the other half of that music paper, and I actually printed something onto it, this black and white design. Jesus has made us clean from our sins, Revelation 1.5. There's another watercolor I did, and I just uh, put it in the corner as a tuck. This is a little children's book where each... Um, Flower, I guess, is represented by like a little fairy. This says the Lady Smock, Lady Smock Fairy, and this says the Primrose Fairy. I got a whole roll of wrapping paper with these coffee cups and coffee pots on them, and it's an endless Amazing. supply of cutting out that I've really been enjoying. Here's a little pocket. This window, I cut out one space from the window and encased some uh, baby's breath, dried and uh, pressed baby's breath in the window and left one part open here as a pocket. These are little um, die cuts of butterflies or maybe it was a, a punch and I just dyed the edges of them with um, some color. This is a flip out. God says, call on me in the day of trouble. Psalm 50, 15. I was playing with stencils on this. And this is another example of my template in a, with of a bird in flight. And then I just attached this little tiny tag as though he were carrying a message. This definition says lift, raise, elevate, upraise, upheave. This is from a vintage card, and I, I stenciled a seven in the little window there. So there would be something when this paper is removed, but I just love this yellow paper. It's a challenge to scoot it back into that spot. There we go. Fabric ruffle. This is my um, watercolor bird. My husband has suggested I should put this in every one of my journals, and I have. And I was playing with um, learning how to make digitals. So these are, these are my drawings with colored pencil. Um, this is a dandelion. I was trying to make like a botanical image where you have symmetrical things. Little bird's nest, little mushrooms, and I alternated and flipped them back and forth to make a border. So I was just playing around with it. I'm not very good at it at all, but it, it was fun. And... It's a good way to reproduce my little bird again and again. So it actually, the little bird actually has a little dandelion seed in its mouth. 
I guess I had shrunk down this dandelion seed and uh, moved it around. This is, I don't know where I saw this, but it was just a rough kind of butterfly where you zigzag, um, you know, it's like a collage of bits of material, bits of paper, and then you zigzag a line down the center to make the um, little fuzzy center of the body. The wisdom that is from above is peaceable, James 3, 17. Waiting, sometimes in our prayers, we're just waiting for an answer. And that, again, that's that tie-dye ink that makes a beautiful stain. Here's a fabric tab with a bulb pin and a little bit of vintage lace, tiny tag, tiny piece of fabric, and a little fabric tape that I put a little stamp on. Little bits of textures from the journal. Side tuck with some goodies in there. Yeah, look at that. That's from the that's from the tie dye ink too, on a plain piece of white notebook paper. Talk to God. There's a side tuck. That's also a stack of pockets. I punched some holes in the side of the paper and threaded the seam binding through it. This is some more brown bag that I stitched a couple of layers and turned it into an accordion pocket. So you can pull open the accordion and get goodies out of each one. It's kind of bulky, I guess, but I only put one thing in each little pocket. But the person who has the journal can take these out and move them around and do other stuff with it. But This was from a, um, a book from a flea market full of plates. So I had a lot of fun cutting out all these plates. This says simple. Makes me think that prayers are just simple conversations with God. Bunch of goodies in here. Oh, an old vintage postcard. My daughter-in-law gave me that. Her dad had found them at some uh, auction or something. A loaded pocket here that's kind of built sideways. So it's one, two, three spots and then a spot in the back where it, I left it open when I glued it on the page. A tiny jar with a flower in it and just little bits down the side. Just full of little labels and such. And I think these are stickers too. So some I've written sticker on and some I have not, but I think that does help the person who gets the journal to know that these are removable and can be stuck somewhere. These are butterflies that I used my template to cut out from the center part of a doily. Well, and you can see the little edge of a doily too. And some faux tape, just... Um, Use regular tape and, and color it with um, alcohol inks and it makes it look aged. This is just a triangle here and here to become a tuck up and down here, top and bottom. Hole. This is um, an example of rubber stamps that I've made. Search me. A good listener. This is another one of those teacup templates I cut out. I think this was actually a background, like something I was uh, putting under thing under me so I could not get my desk dirty. And I ended up writing all over it as well. But I just glued one down to be a decoration. Here's some more of that popsicle packaging. And I attached some beautiful vintage lace. Thank you, Mindy Clanton, so much. And I put a, um, it's just like a long, continuous piece of binding tape or ribbon. And I just cut out one of it. It says love over and over, of course, on the binding. Oh, I probably should reinforce that just a smidge. Let me get my fabric glue. This has been the best fabric glue. I got one at a uh, garage sale, 
tulip fabric glue, I guess. And I used that for, and it only had a little bit left in it, but I used it just a little bit at a time until it was gone, and it lasted a really long time. So I can, bought a new one because I did finally use it up, but it seemed like it lasted forever. But I have found that that works quickly on a journal and it's very strong. I'm going to stick that to the top so I remember to put that back in there. This is from a library book. Yellow Ruffle from a legal pad. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Proverbs 12, 15. This side tuck was a part of a uh, greeting card. And in the last pocket, it is just a piece of a handkerchief that I've sewn into a triangular corner there and glued it down so that this beautiful crochet is peeking out and showing. Then I just filled it with goodies. One of the sets of goodies is this um, three sets of tiny um, file folders. And I even put little papers inside. And I put tiny labels on it. But if you enjoy uh, things in miniature, you'd enjoy that. Also, I have a tutorial on how I made this little set. And I put in my little business card. And this says end notes, and it's another file folder, but of course bigger. And I tried to imitate the way a piece of paper looks with the red marks on the margins and three hole punch. And this is some more of the, the paper I made using my own rubber stamps. So I put several pages in here and made a little label. And it says end notes, another just collage together. And this kind of made me think of threads that a bird might find in a nest. But I absolutely love this fabric. I got it at a flea market and it is so beautiful. It kind of has a sheen to it. So that is flight and flower. Thank you for watching.